I don't know if it's coming across on camera, but jeez, uh, that's annoying. And it's definitely bottom bracket related because it's once every crank turn. Well, that really is Sod's Law. Um, I've come out this morning just to do to, to get some footage. I don't know how far this ride's going to go because it sounds like the bottom bracket's falling apart. So, if it is, then uh, Calibre ain't very impressed because this has only done probably a couple of hundred miles. It's never been abused, it's never been pressure washed or anything like that. Yes, hello again YouTube. Right, uh, just thought I'd give you a quick update on the Calibre Triple B. I've been running it for about four months now, so I thought it was probably a good time to comment on what I think about it. So, uh, in a nutshell, here's what I think. So, time to share some thoughts on the bike. You, you've got to bear in mind that I'm primarily a road biker who dabbles with mountain bikes, so I probably can't talk as authoritatively as some of you guys, um, but I can give what I guess is a standard bloke on the street view of this bike. <clears throat> Componentry, is all good stuff. Rock shocks, forks, rock shocks, rear shock, although I have changed that, but I'll talk about that later. Uh, dropper post as standard, decent price. I'm using probably 10 to 20% of this bike's potential. Um, and, you know, I've seen videos where far, com far more competent riders are taking these down some rock hard runs quite literally and you know the bike just shrugs it off so that's got to be a good thing it's all day comfortable from my perspective and i got the xl frame 186 centimeters me and um, that works well for me to be honest love the fact that it's got a dropper post even with my limited ability there are some little drops and, uh, shall I say, features I like to hit. And it's just great to be able to get that seat out of the way. One thing I would say to a new owner, go tubeless. And uh, do you know what? You could even be cheeky. And if you're buying it from the Go Out Stores store, get them to do it for you. Now, the reason I say that is... Okay, that might, they might charge you 20 quid or something for fitting it. But um, check out my video on how hard it is to get that OE tyre off the rear rim. And it's not just me. Read any of the uh, forums on this bike and it seems to be quite a common thing that that... Uh, what was it? I think it was a Trail Boss at the back. Trail Boss tyre becomes real good friends with the rim. And they don't want to separate for anything. If you watch my video, I fought with it for some time. And then, believe it or not, got it off with some WD-40. So, uh, yeah, go tubeless. I've put uh, Maxxis high rollers on here and the tubeless setup I'm running Maxxis high rollers with uh, Tessa rim tape don't mix feelings about that it's not the easiest stuff in the world to fit I'm sure there's easier rim tape to fit I'm sure even Gorilla tape is as effective but slightly easier to fit uh, and my go-to tubeless valve has become Petey's valves. They fit nicely, little o-ring either side of the seal, and even a real cool little cap that incorporates a valve core remover. Now let's talk about that rear shock. The standard Monarch shock that it comes with, you can't lock it out basically. Now, when you think about what the bike was designed for, that's not a bad thing because, you know, they only ever intended that people will probably 
take it to trails and bike parks and ride down them. But from my perspective, a lockable rear shock is worth its weight in gold. In fact, in the real world, it's a bit of a necessity because very often <coughs> you'll have to ride on the road to get to the trail. That's definitely the case for me. Uh, plus there's the fact that <coughs> if you want to climb on say a fire road or something like that, it's much better if you can lock that shock out because you're not wasting power bouncing it away on an open shock. So I've gone for a Monarch, I think it's XXHV shock. I'll put a little, little link just up in the top corner to the video of me changing it. And that's a beauty. Um, when it's open, it feels very similar to the uh, Monarch that came with the bike. But when it's closed, you really feel the difference. I know that the rear shock seems to be one of the popular upgrades on this bike, so that probably tells you something. Now, even though my bottom bracket, as you might be able to hear in the background, is currently in the process of destroying itself, I've got nothing but good things to say about this uh, NX 1x11 drivetrain. It just works. Okay, so I've talked about the drivetrain. I've talked about the rear shock. Let's talk about the forks for a while. Love them. Really, I mean, you know, they say this thing about impact. And when I took it out of the box and saw those lovely black stanchions, that just looked like quality. And they haven't failed to live up to that expectation. They feel plush. There's more adjustment than I'll ever need. And um, you know, like I said, I'm not the smallest rider, so I'm running them uh, quite high pressure. You know, they're probably, probably near maxed out and they're not complaining. Now, the one component I haven't talked about is brakes. And the reason I haven't talked about them is they're so good, you tend to uh, kind of forget about them. So a lot of these, uh, these were sold with <coughs> guide R brakes on them. And uh, most of them came through, I think, with the uh, guide RE brakes. Now, the RE brake, is the one that's designed for e-bikes. E so, so it's got enough stopping power to stop a heavy old bike. And on this, they are possibly some of the best bike brakes I've ever used. And that's probably a consequence of there being so much power that you're never really pushing them. Now that's the best welcome home you can get, isn't it? That's better than coffee. I hope you enjoyed this. I uh, hope it's been useful to you. Like I say, it's just my thoughts. And like I said in the video, I'm, I'm not a mountain bike expert. I've probably only explored 20-ish percent of the potential of the bike. Um, if I had to summarize it, I think it's brilliant. I think for the money you pay for it, it looks great. It goes great. It stops great. A um, few technical niggles, but pff, you know, you get that with anything really, you know, you can spend a lot of money on a bike uh, and get those little technical foobars. But anyway, 
hope it's been useful I hope you've enjoyed it thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed please consider subscribing as you can see there's new content coming out all the time um, and see you in the next one